all family here anyway. So, hey, uh, just uh, two things that are really interesting are the last present two presentations. There are opportunities there for the for the perfusionist to be doing more than just sitting behind the pump there, right? So what Savada was talking about is something that I believe in as well. That what I'm going to be presenting on a little bit in terms of what we're doing with uh, with ECLS and long term support. But that that there is a role there for the perfusionist to continue to be involved with everything that's happening, not just in the operating theater, but also in the ICU. Uh, be it respiratory or be it, um, you know, be it a cardiac ICU. But what was really interesting about what Andrea was showing is that there's a real opportunity for vessel harvesting and being having the perfusions participate in that. And I remember the first time I saw that the Turumo technology was actually the chief perfusionist in Dresden that was doing the, the actual vessel harvesting. So there are plenty of opportunities and things that are being developed here that aren't just specifically surgical or perfusion, right? And that's a big part of what you're going to see a lot of us as manufacturers continue to do. How do we continue to find a role as things evolve to keep the perfusionists uh, involved in that? So thank you both for, for both of those points. I think that's really valid. Um, as I'd introduced myself yesterday, I am the vice president of global uh, international business development for a new startup company that's called uh, CBM Life Motion. I'm going to talk a little bit about the company, uh, very briefly about the technology, but also just share some ideas on where we're going to be going um, with this specific technology. I'm also the general manager of, a, um, uh, of the factory that we are building in Mirandola, uh, which is the town that I live in. So, And we'll come to why are we building two factories, and I think that's an important point. Um, the story behind the company is pretty interesting. Uh, we brought a, uh, a, a standalone ECLS adult system, a complete ECMO system, we were able to bring it to market um, during COVID. Uh, the Chinese government uh, was looking for opportunities to work with industry in China to be able to find a way to bring this technology to the market during COVID because unfortunately, um, China was a country that was somewhat left out in the ability to treat patients as many of the manufacturers in Europe and the United States uh, really kind of focused on the customers that they had to serve in their own countries. Um, but with um, the what you can see here from this uh, from the slide as well is that we did establish the facility in uh, Mirandola. That company has already been founded, so we're we're going to be breaking ground on the clean room here shortly. I'm going to talk a little bit about why we're doing that. Um, the, the 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 thing that really drew me to this opportunity is it's creating something from from nothing. From they've you know they. Um, China Bridge, the parent company, has been able to bring this technology into, into the Chinese market and it's ECMO technology. So you know, from an engineering and from a marketing perspective, for me, why this made sense is that, okay, you're talking about the most difficult country to get into in the first place. The market potential in, in a country like China is enormous. And then when you also factor in the fact that this is the hardest technology to develop, there are so many things that can go wrong with development of ECMO technology. From an engineering standpoint, they had the most difficult technology on the market and they were already in the most difficult market. So for me, being able to jump into this opportunity, being able to be a part of something from ground zero, but more importantly, being able to create the culture of making this company international. Uh, the fact that they you know, committed to being able to clean, uh, to build a clean room in Mirandola, just because they wanted me to join this company says just how far they're committed and how much I'm committed to it as well. Animal laboratories, um, uh, self-contained bio laboratories for, for doing biological testing, um, that the, uh, the amount of in just investment that th this company has done already in extrusion, micro extrusion, molding, it means that from a vertical integration standpoint, the idea is to try and minimize the risk to you guys that we're not going to be able to become like be, be a commercial partner with one of your institutions. We don't want that to get interrupted because of supply problems. And that's really the purpose for the two, the dual manufacturing society uh, part of this. Um, the, the message here for this, uh, you know, for for uh, for CBM Life Motion, uh, which is the branding of the company outside of China, right? That's the part that I'm responsible for. The, the The message here is that we are going to eat, live, and breathe ECMO for the next five years. That is it. That's all we're doing. We're going to be focusing on getting this product out into the U.S. market, followed soon thereafter by the market into um, in, into uh, into here into Europe. And it's not just it's not just uh, AV. We're looking at VV. We're looking at what are we going to need to enable this technology in eCPR? What are we going to need to be able to enable this technology to be better accepted, um, even for you know for veno veno? What kind of patient monitoring do we need to be able to really make sure that we're meeting the requirements of respiratory support, respiratory failure? But as we get into like what is the technology itself? Um, it's a self-contained, complete ECMO system, right? And uh, as Andrea had pointed, Andreas had said, you know, for the same reason, um, 
this product is only available for sale in China at the moment. And I do have to caveat this with we have made the requirement or we have met the requirements for filing in the, in the European Union. We've done those filings and we have filed with the FDA already on the system. Um, but I think when you're talking about is a system that's enabling both in hospital and outside hospital transport. And when we talk about the completeness of the system, it is a, uh, you know, it is, it's a, if I could take a step back, the, the, the pump design and the console and what really lured me and really made, made this whole opportunity so attractive to me, it's people that I worked with when I was at Tadeco, right? So the chief engineers that designed all the disposables, um, if they weren't based in Aachen, which was a university hospital that we used to work with all the time uh, when I was at Tadeco, it's also the chief engineer and the chief uh, manufacturing officer that are involved in this company. Um, the equipment was designed by the guy that designed the S5 for Stockard. So for me, that meant that, okay, this is me going into familiar territory, but it also means that conveying that message about this technology being designed in Germany, but actually being built in Shenzhen in China, just outside of Hong Kong, that's kind of going to be the first step. The second step is that we will be, uh, as of next year, we'll start manufacturing the disposables of a second generation auctionator design um, that is of Italian base and, and, and by nature is going to be built in Italy. That's the product that we're going to continue to go forward with. We will be going after a 14 day indication and an ECMO indication in the United States with the second device. It'll be a lot longer than that. But again, we filed with the FDA and we have, uh, we have filed uh, our C mark as well. But when, you know, Savannah touched on a very important point, you know, fr from my standpoint, what's important to me is that I do not want to have to go to any of our customers and say, you know, I'm sorry, we're just not, we're not in a position to be able to supply product. The whole strategy about the way that we're structuring ourselves with MDR, the way that we are structuring ourselves as a company going forward, we're doing as much as this as we can internally. And that's the power and the beauty of having the manufacturing capacity of a country like China behind this international venture. But with the design expertise that comes from Europe, the design expertise that also comes from, uh, you know, from uh, specifically from Germany, um, what we've done is we've created a system that we're, we're going to be able to go forward with, but with the intention of having one facility back up the other. The facility that I'm going to be responsible for is effectively only going to be supplying Europe and the United States. However, if one of the factories is not able to back, if, if one of them goes down, we've always got the second one to be able to back it up. So everything that we're doing, even from a manufacturing standpoint, is always having one system being able to back up the, back up the next. So just so that you guys have sort of an, an idea and what we're doing when we're talking about, this is a, a, the kind of a quote from our CEO. Um, who um, is a, she's a electronic engineer. Um, she also worked in Germany for about 20 years with the, um, with the uh, University of Hanover and, and set up the, uh, the reimbursement program for that hospital. So it's somebody that really does appreciate what it takes to be able to bring a product to market in Europe, but also what kind of clinical evidence is going to be required to keep that product on the market. And I just wanted to maybe share this with you guys as a first step. This is the, you know, the, the first official presentation I've done on behalf of the company. Um, as we go forward, this is a perfusion technology company. And yes, we're going to be focused on ECMO. Yes, we're going to be focused on being aggressively coming out with cannula that are going to be challenging the, uh, the specialty market. But we're also going to be at some point jumping back into the perfusion piece because there's no one that can convince me that a company developing ECMO should not also be in the perfusion space, period. And you have my commitment that that's exactly what you're going to see a lot of me in the next 10 years in this role. I'm really talking about what we're doing to advance the state of technology and perfusion. One thing I forgot to mention yesterday, that, I, and I'm really, uh, I do apologize for not having mentioned this. Um, Professor Balfourton was in the, um, was, he, he's a part of the faculty, but he was also in the audience. I don't know how much uh, all of you are aware of just how much he really, uh, the work that he did with Aldea in the United States with Professor Shapira that was in Boston at the time, went to Israel and is now back in Boston. The amount of work that that group did for biocompatible surfaces was the foundation for everything that came after that. Everything that we did with Balance, everything that that, that Dideco and or the Sorin and um, and Eurosets did with phosphocholine, all of that work was based on the the foundational work that Aldea, Shapira, and most importantly Professor Balfourton had done. And I did not have a chance to to, to mention that in my speech because we just covered so much ground so quickly. But I did want to make sure I made that point before I stepped down. So thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. That sounds really promising, and uh, yeah. wish you all the best. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, so